You guys are going to absolutely love this holiday time pullover. It's a super fun, quick knit. It's great for beginner knitters. I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do this. It's knit from the bottom up, and then you're going to separate the fronts and the back, finish the back, then work the front, work the left side and the right side, shape the neckline. You're going to seam the tops. You're going to pick up stitches and knit the collar, and then you're going to pick up stitches for the sleeves and knit the sleeves. The sleeves do have gradual decreases, so the sleeve is tapered, and then you're going to finish off with the cuffs. So first of all, please download the pattern PDF by clicking the link in the video description. And the pattern PDF includes all the supplies that you will need. And take a look at the finished measurements to decide which size to knit. There are sizes listed in one through eight. So you're gonna to wanna to reference the finished bust size and the other measurements to kind of help you figure out what size to knit. So for example, I knit a size three and I'm about a 37 inch bust. The finished measurements for a size three is a 42.5 inches. So that's about five and a half inches in positive ease. So just figure out how much ease you would like. Please note with drop shoulder sweaters, you will need more ease than you think because you need to make sure you have enough width for the sweater to come down um, on your shoulder to give you enough armhole depth. So just keep that in mind as you are deciding what size to knit. So um, go ahead and get your pattern PDF, get all of the supplies you need. And I do want to mention the sweater is pretty cropped. And if you want to add length to the sweater, make sure you do it before you divide for the front and the back. If you do add length up here, it's going to change the armhole depth. So just make sure you understand overall sweater length. You can measure what might make sense by taking a tape measure at the top of your shoulder and measuring down to see how far down you want your, sh um, your sweater to come. Just note the sweater in the front will be a little bit shorter than the sweater in the back, just based on um, your bust. So let's go ahead and get started. Grab your supplies, get your pattern, and I'll walk you through how to knit this sweater step by step. Okay, I am going to cast on 96 stitches and join in the round. I'm gonna use the long tail cast on method to cast on my stitches. I've got my tail in front and I am just going to cast on 96 stitches and then join in the round. cast on one extra stitch because I'm going to drop that when I join my work in the round. So I'm going to have my stitch marker handy and I'm going to make sure my stitches aren't twisted. And I like to do that by making sure the bottom of the work is all in the center. And I just try to lay it flat here and make sure everything is not twisted. And then I'm going to slip the yarn towards the end of my left hand needle so I can move the last stitch over to the right hand needle. Then I'm going to take what was the last stitch on my right hand needle and slip that over the stitch I just moved over. And then I'm just going to drop it and pull the yarn to cinch that up a little bit more. And then I'm going to place a stitch marker to denote the beginning and end of round. I'm gonna make sure my tail is out of the way so I'm not knitting with the tail. And then I'm going to begin my knit one, purl one. Knit one stitch, purl one stitch. Knit one stitch, purl one stitch. This is also called one by one rib. And I'm gonna complete this for about 10 rounds and that's just over three inches or so with this yarn. So you'll continue this all the way around and then I'll show you what to do once you get to the end of the round and to show you how to continue knitting. 
All right, I'm nearing the end of the round here. I'm gonna end with a purl stitch if I've started with a knit stitch because we have an even number of stitches. So that just helps you realize if you've kept your stitches correctly with the knit one, purl one. Then you slip the marker and then you simply start knitting one and purling again. So you'll knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches all of the way around again. I have finished knitting my 10 rounds in one by one rib. So now I'm simply going to slip the stitch marker at the beginning of the round and knit in stockinette stitch. And stockinette stitch is just knitting every round when you're knitting in the round. So I'm gonna knit stockinette stitch for about 11 inches based on how long I want my sweater to be. So I'm gonna do 11 inches for the body and about eight inches in armhole depth. So the overall length is like 19 inches. I might go up to 20 inches. I'm not 100% sure yet. I probably will do 12 inches on the body and eight inches for the armhole depth or somewhere around there. But I am designing this on the fly. When you're nearing the end of your first round, you simply just slip the stitch marker and continue knitting every stitch. Okay, so I have finished knitting the body. I've knit it to be about 11 inches from the cast on edge. And um, this is where you can change the length of the body if you'd like. So I know that I need eight inches for my armhole depth. So that's how I figured out um, how much to knit the body, how long to knit the body. So my overall length is about 19 inches, which is pretty cropped for me. Um, so if you want more length, just make sure you add it to the bottom, keeping in mind what your armhole depth is. Okay, so now I am just going to knit the back, and to knit the back, I'm going to knit across half of my stitches. So I had 96 stitches, so I'm going to knit across 48 stitches, and then I'm going to be working back and forth for the back. So I'm going to knit across half of my stitches to 48 stitches. So I've knit across 48 stitches here. And now I'm just simply going to turn the work and work back. So I'm gonna be working back and forth. I am not gonna remove these stitches. So typically like with the pattern, with the written pattern, if I do a written pattern, it's gonna tell you to put these, all of these front stitches on a piece of waist yarn. So that means you just take a tapestry needle with a long thread long enough to carry half the stitches and weave it through and remove the stitches. However, for the sake of time, and this is just how I actually knit, I'm just walking you through what I normally do. I've knit across half my stitches for the back. I'm gonna turn the work and knit back, leaving these stitches alone and not working all of these front stitches at the moment. So that's what I do. Um, you just have to be careful when you knit back that you are ending at the right point right here. Okay, so I'll just show you what it looks like when I come back. But now I'm just going to be working back and forth, stocking that stitch for eight inches for the back, and then I'm going to bind off on the wrong side, so after I have finished a wrong side row. So I'll just show you what it looks like to knit back and forth like this without removing the stitches. It just saves you a little bit of time, and if you know, if you, some people have a hard time visually understanding or visually seeing what you're doing when you are done knitting in the round and you're just knitting back and forth. It can be confusing to keep track of, but I just knit this way because I don't like removing stitches, um, putting them back on, that sort of thing. If I'm, if I know I'm just going back and forth pretty easily, I won't, I won't remove the stitches. So, um, when I am... So you just work all the way back to the stitch marker now because this is just half the stitches to the back. So when you get back to the stitch marker, you simply turn the work 
and instead of slipping the stitch marker, you just keep working back and forth. So now I'm knitting. So now I'm gonna knit all the way across those 48 stitches. So I've knit across 42 stitches, but I want you to see where you can tell it's halfway across. It's a little bit harder to see before you start knitting a lot, but just pay attention. You can count the stitches before the work gets long enough, because when the work gets really long, it'll be easy to see where, where this back ends, but just make sure you're paying attention to that. And now you can just turn the work and purl back to the beginning of round marker now for the back. So you just continue doing this, working back and forth just across the back stitches until you get to your desired armhole depth. Work all the way back to the marker, turn the work, and now it's a little bit easier to see the gap and where things start and end. And so I'll work all the way Cross half the stitches again and you can see that it's a little bit more obvious now where to end. I've knit the back to eight inches now. Eight inches from where we divided it from the front to the back and now I'm gonna bind off. So I have finished after I've completed a wrong side row so I've got the right side of the work facing me now. And I also just wanted to show you what it's looking like working with the other stitches still on the needle. So you can see that that's what it's looking like. And now I'm just gonna bind off by doing a simple bind off here. And I'm just going to knit two stitches and then slip that first stitch over the stitch I just knit. And now I've bound off one stitch. And then you just keep doing that. Knit the, knit the next stitch, bind off. Knit the next stitch, bind off. And you keep doing this all the way across. And then I'll show you what to do when you get to the last stitch. Just be careful, make sure you're not binding off too tightly. Try to keep your, um, try to keep everything consistent there. Your tension consistent all the way across. When you get to the last two stitches there, you just bind off that last stitch. Then you can snip a tail. I'm gonna leave kind of a long tail in case I wanna use this yarn to seam the top shoulder. And there we go, I've bound off for the back now. So now I'm gonna turn the work over and if you've removed the stitches and put them on a piece of waste yarn, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put them back on the needle. If you're like me and you kept the stitches on the needle, we are gonna join the, the yarn on the right side. And then we are going to start working the front and to join the yarn you simply take the end and all right to join the work you just simply take the end of the yarn and start knitting and it might be a little loose but you can continue to pull make sure you leave a tail you can weave that in later and you just start knitting across and you're going to work back and forth On the front now. I'm gonna work for about four inches because I know my neckline takes about four inches. So I'm gonna work stockinette for four inches. When you get to the end of the row, simply turn the work and work back on the wrong side and purl back just as you did for the back. So you're going to continue stockinette, knitting on the right side, purling on the wrong side for the length you're supposed to do for your size. I'm going to work about four inches. 
I'm ending after I've completed a wrong side row. So I've knit the front now about four inches from the cast on and it's important to just note to, to follow the pattern instructions um, to see how long it is for the entire length. Um, I design on the fly here so I don't have all the measurements figured out for all the sizes. Um, so just keep that in mind and make sure you're checking the pattern as you go here. Okay, so now I'm going to start working the neckline shaping. And we're going to first just work the left front of the neckline shaping. So we're going to knit across a certain number of stitches and then start reducing to make the neckline on this side of the work and we're going to ignore the rest of the stitches. Again, you can either move these onto a piece of waist yarn or you can follow me and keep the stitches on the needle. All right, so I have 48 stitches on my front right now and I am going, I'm just kind of walking you through the math right now. I'm going to bind off eight stitches in the center and reduce four stitches on either side. So, so we're going to work across the first 20 stitches and reduce to 16 stitches. And then we'll um, join yarn on the right side, bind off a certain number of stitches. In my case, it's going to be eight stitches and then work the other side to get the front up, to get the right front going on that side. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean here. So now I'm gonna knit across, I'm gonna work across the first 20 stitches, but we're actually gonna start reducing for the neckline on the first row. So what I'm gonna do is knit across 17 stitches Again, reference your pattern for however many stitches you're supposed to work across for your size. Okay, so I've worked across 17 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 stitches. And now I'm actually going to start reducing at the neckline. My left front um, is actually 20 stitches but we are going to now knit two together, knit one. And so now we've done our first decrease for the neckline right here. And now we're just going to be working back and forth across the remaining should be 19 stitches. Okay, so this is the point where you can move these stitches onto a piece of waist yarn if you would like. I am not going to do that. I'm gonna turn my work and just continue working back across these stitches. So on the wrong side, you're simply going to purl to the end. Turn the work back, and now you can see that's where we reduce, so we're just gonna be working across these stitches. Again, if this is confusing to you, you can always just put these stitches on a piece of waist yarn. I'm just taking you through how I knit this, and I think it's just a little faster when you don't have to remove the stitches. Um, if you can keep track of it without having to remove the stitches, then that is great. So you're gonna work now until you hit three stitches before the end of this left front. And left front means left as in the side it's on you as if you were wearing it. So I'm gonna knit until I have three stitches left to the end. We've reduced one stitch. We're gonna reduce a second stitch now on the right side. I'm doing a total of four rows where I reduce stitches. So again, pay attention until the, um, where the end is. It can be harder to see before you knit a lot of length on this left front. Okay, now I've got three stitches to the end. I'm gonna knit two together and knit one. And now you can see our knit two togethers are kind of lined up here, leaning this way, leaning to the right here. So that will help shape our neckline. So you turn the work 
and you purl back. And so you're going to repeat the rows until you get to the number of stitches you're supposed to have for your size. So I'm supposed to repeat this for a total of four, um, four times. So I've reduced four stitches. So if I've started with 20, I should end with 16. So I've reduced twice here and here. And now this will be my third row where I'm reducing. So I'll see you back here after I've completed all of my decrease rows here. And I'm ready to knit to the top of the right or top of the left front. I'll just show you one more time. And now it's easier to see where that row ends. Three stitches to the end and you can see the slant here. I'm going to knit two together. Knit one. Now that's looking pretty nice here, that slant. Okay, so I'm going to purl back again. And I will see you back here after I've completed my decreases. Okay, I've completed my four decrease rows on the right side and I've purled back. So it's looking like this now. And now I am going to complete stock in that stitch across my remaining 16 stitches until it hits the length of the back. So for me, that's probably about four to six rows here. I'm gonna see what it looks like. And then we're gonna end after a wrong side row and bind off on the right side. So you simply now just knit and purl back and forth without doing any decreases until your front left side, your left front, reaches the same length as the back. And remember, you're gonna need to still bind off one row. And I do wanna mention, it is okay if your back or your front, if they're not exactly the same length when you seam it up. It doesn't really matter if they're off by a row or two. You just wanna make sure that your left front and your right front are the same length. That's the real thing to keep track of. Okay, I'm ready to bind off. Now I finished after a wrong side row and I completed more like eight rows um, just based on how it was measuring from the back. And so now I am going to bind off on the right side. You don't have to bind off on the right side. I like to write my pattern so that you're binding off on the right side, um, but it is, I think it's a little easier to seam when you are binding off on the right side. Again, you do not have to. It is still possible to seam if you bind off on the wrong side. Just make sure if you're binding off on the wrong side, you're binding off with purl stitches. Um, but like I said, I think the pattern's written so that you're binding off on the right side. So you bind off like this slipping your first stitch over your last stitch there. And then when you have one stitch left, you simply Cut the work, leaving a tail. And pull that through. So now we've completed the left front. 
Now it's time to join the yarn at the neckline here and bind off a certain number of stitches for the bottom of the neckline across here and then we will knit the right front mirroring what we did on this side but just reducing a little differently. So to join the work you simply grab the end and we are going to just start knitting and binding off the number of stitches I need to bind off. So I'm going to bind off eight stitches. So you knit the first stitch and I'm kind of holding that yarn here. You knit the first stitch and you knit the second stitch and then you bind off one stitch. So that's considered one stitch bound off, but we've got one stitch here. So just remember that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've bound off eight stitches, but I still have one stitch on this side. So that will be counted. I should have 20 stitches total. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, counting this one. And um, the directions will say to knit one. We've already knit one on the first row. And now we're going to be doing our decrease round right away, our decrease row right away by slip, slip, knitting, which will give us a slant in this direction to the left. And you slip, slip, knit like this. And now we've reduced a stitch and our slant is going this way. And then you knit to the end. And you'll purl back and do the same thing where you knit one, where you knit one and do the slip, slip, knit, knit to the end. I have one more decrease to do and I just wanted to show you one more time how to do this for the right front. So you knit one and then you complete a slip, slip, knit. And then you knit to the end and purl back. And you're gonna do the same complete um, stack on that stitch. So this is my last decrease row. I should have the same number of stitches left as I did on the other side. So for me, that's 16. And then you turn the work and just purl back again. And you're going to bind off the same way you did on the other side and making, making sure the length is the same as the left front. So I am going to complete stack on that stitch the same length I did as the other side and bind off. And then I'll show you guys how to seam the shoulders. All right, when you have finished binding off for the left and the right fronts, you can see what your neckline looks like now. It's time to seam the shoulders. So you're going to line the work up and you're going to use, I, I left a long enough tail to seam the top um, when I snipped the yarn for my right front. So I am just going to thread my tapestry needle. If you don't have long enough, you can just cut a piece of yarn and do the same thing here. And I just like to first connect the work on the last little stitch there. And to seam, I simply go through the upside down V's on the bottom, pull through, and go through the right side up V's on the top. And this way, it looks like seamless 
stitching, so upside down V on the bottom. And right side up at the top, being sure you're going into the next one after you came out. So you just do this all the way across. So I came out of this one, so I'm gonna go into this one now. And when you get to the end, I like to just go and finish through the back when I'm done and at the end. And then now you can see it looks like a seamless stitch across the front and the back. So now you'll just do the same thing. And I definitely suggest seaming from the outside of the work into the collar. That way everything lines up a little. Okay, I've finished seaming the shoulders now. And you can see we have our whole neckline complete. And this is when I suggest you actually knit the collar at this point because then you can try it on and get an accurate um, feeling for how long of length you want your arms to be. When you knit the collar, it'll sit more accurately on you as opposed to just putting it on like this where the collar um, is much stretchier at this point. So I'm gonna go down a needle size. I'm gonna take my nine millimeter 16 inch knitting needles and I am going to start in the middle of the back of the neck here and I'm going to insert my needle and I'm going to join my yarn here and I'm going to pick up stitches one stitch for every stitch along the back here and it will be a bit loose here and you'll be able to just pull the tail And I'm just holding that tail so it doesn't come out. So I'm going to go and pick up a stitch for every stitch across the back here. I've picked up a stitch for every stitch across the back. And now down the left front, all the way down to where we started to bind off at the bottom of the neckline, I'm gonna pick up four of five stitches. So that means, and it can be a little wonky here with this seam, but you're gonna insert your needle through that first stitch. So that's one, two, three, skip a stitch, four. So that's picking up four stitches for five rows. When we knit perpendicularly to the work, we skip some stitches so that the work lays too flat. If we picked up a stitch for every row here along the side, it would be too many stitches. So then I just go one, two, three, skip a stitch, four. One, two, three, skip a stitch, four. One, two, three, and then now I'm basically at the bottom here of the neckline. So now I'm gonna pick up a stitch for every stitch the bottom of the neckline and we join the work here so just make sure you get that stitch out of the way and now we're gonna just pick up a stitch for every stitch along the bottom of the neckline there one so you are gonna work all the way across the bottom of the neckline and then work your way up to the back and then pick up a stitch for every stitch along the back. Okay, I finished the bottom of the neckline, now we're gonna do the same thing 
four stitches for every five rows. One, two, three, skip a stitch, four, one, two, three, skip a stitch, four. Now I'm along the back, so I'm just picking up a stitch for every stitch along the back here. And again, just count and make sure you're picking up an even number of stitches so that when you knit one, purl one, it works out. Okay, just for reference, I've got about 54 stitches on mine. I'm going to place a stitch marker and begin just doing my one by one rib. And you might need to pull that end. So you just knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way around, just like we did the bottom ribbing, but we're just knitting a smaller, smaller number of stitches this time. You should end with a purl stitch if you have an even number of stitches and then you just slip the marker and knit one. I didn't really need to join in the round here um, because you've got this tail anyway, so you'll be weaving that in. So that kind of cinches everything up. I knit about eight rounds or about two and a half inches or so and then now I'm gonna bind off in the one by one rib just as we did before. And make sure you bind off loosely because this is, or if it's too tight, it'll be hard to get your head through the opening of the sweater. This is meant to have a collar that sits a little tight around your neck. So just make sure you're binding off kind of loosely all the way around. When you've worked all the way around on your bind off, you can snip a tail and pull the yarn through. Grab your tapestry needle and finish this off the same way you did the bottom ribbing. And I just weave the work back through back through this way and then weave the end up the side of a leg of a stitch all the way up and then I pull it through snip the end and then you have your collar finished Okay, I've got the collar done. Now I'm gonna start working on the sleeves and I'm gonna pick up stitches and knit in the round for my sleeves. And my sleeves are eight inches in circumference. So, um, I'm sorry, they're 16 inches in circumference, which means that they are eight inches on one side. And my gauge is about nine stitches per four inches. So if I double that, that's 18 stitches for um, eight inches. So if I double that again, that is 36 stitches for 16 inches in circumference. So if you follow my math there, um, I should be able to pick up and knit 36 stitches for my sleeve. So I am going to cast on using my 10 millimeter 16 inch circular needles 
and I'm going to pick up 18 stitches along one side for my sleeve and 18 stitches down the other side. So I'm going to try and pick up um, three stitches for every four rows here, which means you knit two stitches, one, two, and then skip a row. Skip a row. So I'm picking up fewer stitches than I did for my collar. So one, two, three, all along one side. And then I'm going to make sure I have um, 18 stitches on this side. So you might have to space it out a little bit differently as you get towards the end just to make sure you pick up 18 stitches. So it's tricky because you're trying to gauge, you know, spreading them evenly across, but also making sure you have a, you're picking up a certain number of stitches. So just um, try to work that out as best as you can. Okay, so I have the 18 stitches picked up along one side of the sleeve here, and now I'm at the top. Make sure you wanna start on the bottom of the armhole when you start picking up. And then I'm going to finish and pick up 18 more stitches. Along the bottom, you follow how many stitches you're supposed to pick up for your size. And one thing to note, if for some reason you have a lot of space left over and um, you can always, if this ends up being too long um, lengthwise, you can always seam up the bottom sleeve, if that makes sense. But you do wanna make sure you stay um, consistent with the overall armhole depth, but just wanted to note that. I have my 36 stitches picked up. I'm going to actually pick up one extra stitch here and use that to join my work in the round like this. And I'm just going to drop that stitch and pull it. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker. And now I'm going to start just knitting in the round. So now you just continue to knit all the way around, slipping that beginning of round marker along the way. And if you choose to reduce stitches along the way, I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to do a gradual decrease on the sleeves because um, I just like the way that looks. If you'd like more of a balloon sleeve, you can knit the same width all the way down and then decrease more drastically before the sleeve cuff. So I'm going to knit about six rounds or so and then show you how to do a decrease round. So I've knit about six rounds or about two inches and now I'm going to do a decrease round and I'm going to continue doing a decrease round every two inches or so but I just wanted to show you how to do a decrease round on the sleeves. So you're going to knit one and then you're going to knit two together. Knit all the way around until you have three stitches left. And once you have three stitches left, you're going to do a slip, slip, knit, and knit one. So now you've made two decreases on that round, one going this way and one going this way. So they're kind of mirror imaged going in towards each other here. And you're going to, I'm going to knit six more rounds and then do another decrease or every, about every two inches. And then I'll check back in here and show you guys how many um, I've done a total, and then we will, um, and then we will switch needles to a smaller size and knit the sleeve cuff. So I've completed one sleeve, and I just want to show you what it's looking like and what it's measuring. Basically, you know, use the pattern as a guide to figure out how to construct the sleeve, but honestly, everybody's arm length is so different. So I honestly tried this on as I went to see how it would fit. So overall, 
Um, this sleeve is about 18 inches long and I decreased about every two inches or so all the way down. So I did um, 12 decreases and knit to about 15 inches or so and then did three inches of a cuff. So I wanted to show you overall what the sleeve is looking like. So before you work on the cuff, you are, you've made the sleeve as long as you need to make it. So I'm going to show you how to switch needle sizes. So I went down to nine millimeter, 16 inch circular needles for the cuff. So I just wanted to show you how to go down on needle size before you knit the cuff. So I'm going to take my, um, my other set of needles and um, you're, you're going to knit off the old needles onto the new needle. So I have one stitch left here in the round so I don't lose my stitch marker. And okay. So to go down on a needle size, And the reason we go down on needle size is to just make that cuff a little tighter. So overall, I started with 36 stitches for my sleeve. I decreased six times, so I went down 12 stitches. So I have 24 stitches for my, for my cuff. Um, and I'm just knitting around, so I'm literally knitting off of the old needle onto the new needle. And so you just continue working all the way around, knitting off the larger needle onto the smaller needle. And I've knit it all off. So I'm going to start my one by one rib now. And I just wanted to note, it is a little tough to work on the 16 inch circular needles for the cuff with 24 stitches, but it is doable. So you just slip the marker at the beginning of the round and start doing your knit one, purl one. And I completed this for about 10 rounds or so, and then bound off. So I my cuff added about three inches. So just make sure you knit the cuff to the length the, make sure you knit the sleeve to the length that you would like, minus about three inches for the cuff. And you can always change the cuff length as well. Again, use the pattern as a guide, you know, if you're, especially if you're making this for somebody else. Um, but, you know, make the sweater sleeves. It's easy to try them on as you go to see how long you need to make your sleeve. So I am going to knit this the same way I knit the collar. It's just knitting one, purling one in the round. And then I'm going to bind off and seam it all up the same way I did the collar. So I'm not going to show you that again. Um, but just wanted to note that I have 24 stitches for my cuff here. So I will see you back here when I am done knitting this cuff. Just wanted to note that I did 10 rounds and I'm going to bind off on the 11th round, just to note and not the 10th round. So I am just going to start binding off in the one by one rib the same way I did with the color.
All right, I'm going to weave in the last ends here for my sleeve. And then going to show you how to seam up any armhole gaps. So you can go back if you have any armhole gaps and I've got a little bit of one over there. So basically no exact science here, you turn the work inside out and I usually just take my tapestry needle, my end isn't that long but it's long enough, it should work just fine. Again, no exact science here, I just kind of put my work through some of the outer legs around where the hole is and then just pull it together and you don't want it to be too crazy tight. You know what, I'm gonna go back and catch around here. You don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want to create a really tight seam around the armhole, but basically I'm just going to go through and create a bit of a knot there and at the end. So you can do that for the other armhole if you would like and you can go back through and weave in all your other ends around where you ended your ended your work and then you'll be done with your sweater.